of time in five minute increments. So one, two, three, four, five. And my temperature. Temperature in degrees Celsius, that's 100. 90, 80, 70, 60. All right, so when time is equal to zero, I'm at 100 degrees Celsius. When time is at, uh, after the first five minutes, I'm at 70 degrees. After the second five minutes, I am at that 51.25. After the third, I'm at 39. And hopefully you can start to see a curve forming there. It basically is going to get closer and closer to 20, but officially never hit. Eventually it's going to be so close that statistically you can't tell the difference. But Newton's law cool. Could you explain again how you, uh, where the 50 degree Celsius came from? Did you just choose that randomly in order to find Wait, it? Wait, which one came from? The 50 degrees Celsius on the right. Yeah. No, no, that's not random. The, the random parts are, those are the random parts, just setting up the problem. The rest of it just becomes set. So, you see where we got the three eighths. So what we're saying is that every time, every five minute increment, because that's what I established in the problem, every five minute increment, it's gonna lose three eighths of what it could lose. What it can lose, as was said before, is that it can, the coldest it can be is the room temperature. It won't get colder than the room. So it starts out So it starts out and at most it could lose is 80 degrees Celsius. So starting at 100, it can't get lose more than 80. I'm now at 70 degrees. The most I can lose now is still, I'm at 70, I can't get below 20. The most it could possibly lose is 50. That's where that 50 comes from. And then once we establish that it is at 51.25 degrees Celsius, the most it can lose now well, again, the room's still at 20 degrees Celsius. The most it's going to lose now is 31.25 degrees. Okay, so X is equal to the change in temperature every five minutes. Yes. And it should, because there's, you get closer and closer to the actual temperature, uh, it's losing, the magnitude of amount it loses gets less and less, and or it just gets closer and closer to the room temperature. Questions to hear. Then I say, why don't we? Oh, let me just set up the next one. Uh, we'll just conceptually talk through it, and then we'll take the break and walk down to the lab room. Okay, so you're still writing that? Okay. That thumbs up as when you're done, or thumbs up as you are still writing? I am done. You are done. Any objections if I erase this? Now that's a, a hot object in a large environment or a large room. Now, if we dealt with a smaller one, say I've got a container with water, and the water is initially 20 degrees Celsius, and into it, I put my block of aluminum, and let's just say this is at 100 degrees Celsius. 
I know that the final temperature is going to be somewhere between 20 and 100 degrees. We can't use Newton's law of cooling because this amount of water is uh, this amount of water is small enough that it, the, the temperature change is not going to be spread out over an entire room. So my final temperature has got to be somewhere in between there. Now the question is, is it going to be closer to the water or closer to the aluminum? Let's so simplify it slightly. Let's say I have 50 grams of aluminum and 50 grams of water. So what it really comes down to at this point, if I have the same mass of each, because remember that the temperature is MC delta T, if the mass is the same for the two, then these two become critical. Whichever one has the higher specific heat will have the lower change in temperature. And aluminum, as we discussed, is 0.215 calories per gram degrees Celsius. That's for aluminum. And for water, one calorie per gram degrees Celsius. This is why calories was basically chosen, calories, grams, degrees Celsius, is because they're trying to come up, you know, several hundred years ago, you're trying to come up with something that other people can test. Water, very common, especially for, at that point, they're probably only thinking of Europeans. Uh, water is very common, and so you pick some unit system so that you got a one there. So it takes more energy to change a one gram of water, one degree Celsius, than it does aluminum. It takes uh, between four and five times more energy to change the temperature of water than it does the aluminum. Therefore, the final temperature will be between these two and closer to 20 degrees than it is to 100 degrees. And that we will leave as conceptual. Uh, questions before we adjourn to the other room? So, the one that has a higher um, specific heat, if the temperature is going to be more to whatever that. The final temperature. The final, the final temperature would be closer to that one. Uh, Hewitt calls, I, I think, specific heat sort of like thermal inertia. The greater the number, the harder it is to change. Assuming that they have to get the same mass of each, that could change. I could also play with it and make the amount of water larger, uh, or make the amount of water smaller so that it will come out closer to the aluminum than the water. I thought you were asking a question. Oh, no, I can move my hand up. All right. Let's head on down, I'll go grab the lab. Yep. And we can rejoice as you <laughs> I immediately